It has been a busy 24 hours for the Prime Minister as we head into the second week of this election year. Yes, we're only in week two, would you believe? Mm. The Prime Minister has pledged to curb benefits and government spending to help fund tax cuts. That, as he's also claimed that every vote for Nigel Farage is a vote for Sir Keir Starmer ahead of this year's election. Elsewhere, Labour have called on the Prime Minister to come clean over his alleged reservations towards the Rwanda scheme when he was Chancellor. Well, Sir Keir Starmer has called on Number 10 to publish these papers from March 2022 that reportedly suggest he had concerns over the extortionate costs of the plans. Uh, let's talk to political commentator Peter Spencer. Morning to you, Peter. Um, whether people cheer or boo at the idea of curbing benefits, at least we know how the tax cuts will be paid for. Indeed so, and uh, you're quite right. It's going to be a question of there will be winners and there will be losers. Um, it's quite interesting, though, that Starmer has... Uh, that, sorry, that, that, that Sunak has nailed his colours to this particular mask because um, only a day or so back, the Chancellor was was uh, uh, um, umming and erring and saying, Look, I'm not sure that we can really afford tax cuts. Well, um, the Prime Minister has now taken the clear decision that's the direction we're going to go in. It will garner support from wavering Tory supporters, but at the same time, it will cost him uh, the support of those who aren't quite sure which way to vote. And it's potentially very awkward for Rishi Sunak elsewhere, Peter. Labour Party calling on him to come clean over his alleged reservations towards the Rwanda scheme when he was Chancellor. Apparently, he thought it was too expensive. Well, given that we appear to have committed something approaching half a billion pounds to this particular project, and it has so far produced diddly squat. I think this, this says something rather, ra rather complimentary about about Rishi Sunak's judgment. I mean, the, the, the really sad thing about this, and I and I do say this with a countenance more in sorrow than in anger, like Hamlet's dad, it, it, that he clearly did look at this scheme and say, "Look, hang on a minute. You know, it's going to cost a fortune." There are real questions over its viability. Is it a good idea? And then where it becomes a sort of a metaphor for his leadership of the party, he allowed himself to be overruled. So instead of telling telling all the, those uh, right-wing elements just to frankly do one and, and to ditch the idea, he has bet the farm on it. Now, what is sad about this is the fact that thanks to his diligence and his competence and his outreach, he has actually managed to cut uh, crossings of the channel by something over a third, which is a result. And uh, he's also managed to bang heads together in the Home Office to uh, get them to get them to actually start sorting out seriously sorting out the backlog of, of claims so he could have had he gone the other way been able to turn around and say listen guys we have made real progress here in a couple of years on a couple of years time uh, we, we might actually be sorted instead of which in a couple of weeks time there's there's very likely going to be hell up in the commons when the Rwanda bill comes before MPs and the likelihood is there will be an almighty blue-on-blue -blue tussle over um, how, how strong this piece of legislation needs to be and, indeed, whether it will work or not. And this, I think, works hugely to the disadvantage of the Tory party. When you see this, this complete chaos, it is perfectly logical for the voting public to think, well, this lot, they're so disorganised, frankly, they couldn't organise an orgy in a brothel, so the other lot simply can't be worth. Um, I'll tell you what I find interesting, Peter. We had, uh, over the big speeches in the last week, we had Richard Tice, the leader of Reform UK, saying, you know, everyone's facing Starmageddon. And then we have the Prime Minister today, Philip Davis MP yesterday, saying, well, if you vote for Reform UK or Richard Tice or Nigel Farage, who may be making a political comeback in all of this, basically you're voting for Labour. It's the only way Labour can get in. <clears throat> it might sound a bit desperate, but they've got a point point, haven't they? They have certainly got a point, yes, because of the fact that there clearly is a, a, a fairly wide swathe of support in the country for the, the reform Farage 
way of thinking, something like about 10% or whatever. But our first past the vote, past the post voting system means that these guys haven't got a cat in hell's chance of actually getting seats. But what they will do is bleed support away from the Conservative Party. Where is it going to go then, logically? To the Labour Party. So desperation, though it may be, I think they most certainly have a point. But what I think it also does is herald what we're looking at starting from <laughs> starting from now is probably the longest and lastest election campaign in decades. Uh, I think you could be right there. Peter, yeah. good to see you. Thank you. <laughs>